Um, I'm a musician. I play the oud, which I'll talk about in a second, but I don't want to talk too much, so I'm going to try and do introduction brief and then play for you because that's more fun for me than talking, and, and then you guys can ask me questions. But just a little bit of background. I just got my smicha in May. Um, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be free of rabbinical school. I, I, I only come for, for certain uh, things. And uh, my, great, my great-grandfather was a very um, prolific author, and he happened to be a scholar of Midrash. He wrote the first ever encyclopedia of Midrash. His name was Menachem Kasher, and he wrote the Torah Shlema. And so I spent rabbinical school studying only Midrash. And so, so when I came to this task, it was from that background. So know that kind of that's where I come from. I, I spent five years literally reading only his book. You know, when I had to read something else, I would do it, but it was very minimal. <laughs> and, um, and I think I was enamored by the fantastical nature of Midrash but what Jill spoke about, when she spoke about poles um, and they're not being dualized, that's what resonated most with me, that Midrash, what it can do is create a wider context, but it doesn't negate you know, the context of Pshat. That's my background a little bit with Midrash and, and Pshat and text. And, um, and so when I read, I, because I know the Midrash so well now, it's almost always with me. I, I, it's hard for me even to separate in my head between a pshat reading and a midrashic m- reading, and I'll, I'll have five midrashic readings on any given thing, and, and it illuminates the pshat. So that's kind of my sense of reading. From a musical place, um, I play the oud, which is the Arabic lute. Uh, it's the ancestor of the Western lute, and it's one of the oldest of the stringed instruments. And I studied the traditional music for now many years, and the system they use is called makam, M-A-Q-A-M, from the Hebrew similar to makom. It's a modal system, so there's a lot of different makamat, they're called, a lot of different makam, and when you're inside of a makam, it has the feel of a certain color or place, makom, makam. So that's kind of the music I use. So when tasked with creating a contextual response to the song, you know, uh, it was a big question for me, and and I liked the question. There exists um, a very cool system where each Torah portion is already assigned a makam, a musical figure. And I've been working with this system, especially this year, we're putting out a video each week where we put out music to the weekly makam. So I went to Bishalach, and the makam is called Ajam. And it's a very, it's, it's the Western scale. It's the Western major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Like it's that scale. Of all the music that I play, it's the most uh, resonant with Western audiences because it's the Western major scale. And so you might think that I would have taken that scale and put it to something in this Torah portion and created the song for you today. Right? That would have been a fitting thing for me to do, given both my training in makam in this system, and also that the C, you know, is kind of a joyful moment. It's not what I did. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I have to tell one little background story, and then I'm really, I'm going to play. It was Tisha B'Av one year. This was probably three or four years ago. And Tisha B'Av is, you know, it's the holiday, the most, um, what, what word? Somber, sad, yeah, that. So, and I went to JTS. I don't know what I was doing at JTS on Tisha B'Av. It, it probably only happened once. But I went, and they were sitting on the floor singing dirges. And, and I couldn't handle it. I, like, I couldn't handle it. I left after maybe half an hour. It, and it left a really, really bad feeling. And I, didn't, I couldn't yet explain why. And I went, and I did things that you're probably not supposed to do on Tisha B'Av. And then the next night, I was, at a, um, I was at a concert in Prospect Park from a reggae artist named Burning Spear. Okay, fantastic. And he begins to play this song, and, and for the first half of the show, I thought a different guy was Burning Spear. It was like behind a tree, I couldn't see him. And then I finally see him, and they start this song, and it's near the end of the show, 
and the song is called Slavery Days. And the lyric is, do you remember the days of slavery? Please remember, please remember the days of slavery. Okay, now, if Burning Spear had been trained anywhere like JTS or the composers of the Jewish music of that realm, the song would have sounded like what Tisha B'Av sounded like, because it's a similar sentiment of remember the destruction, remember the where we were, you know, remember how, remember the bottom, okay? And, and you sing a song like that. And Slavery Days by Burning Spear could not be more the opposite. It's trumpets banging, do, 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 do. do you remember the days of slavery? Sweet, sweet, sweet. And I had this moment of, of being at JTS and oh, that was it. That the music doesn't need to be so programmed. The feeling in the music doesn't need, need to be programmed to the feelings that we're trying to evoke with the music. And it was a big thing for me. It was, mm -hmm. oh, that when creating music to fit a text or a moment, that it doesn't need to be the assumed musical thing in your ear to evoke that feeling in the best way. And so I call Jeff on the phone, and he, or he calls me, and I say, you know, what do I do? How do I make a how do I make a shot, you know, music? He says, you know, you you read it closely, and maybe it moves like this or like that, and and I really I, I spent a week thinking about that, but it's not quite how I work, you know, because I believe that a lot of different musical modes could fit on a given given text. So I do have a lot. I've got more to say because it was such a, a great assignment, but I'm going to play, and then maybe you'll. Um, Ask me the rest.
אשיר על אדוני כי גאו גאה סוס ולא חוכו רמה וים עוזי וזמרת יבי לי לישועו זה לי וינביהו ברו מבנו אדוני איש מלחמה אדוני שמו אדוני איש מלחמה אדוני שמו מרכבות פרו וחילו ירב הים מבחר של אישה טובו בים סוף וברוב גאונך תרוס כמך יאכלמו כקש מחמוך ואבלים אדוני, מחמוך נדר וקודש, נורת תהילותו עושה פלא. אז ישיר משה ובני ישראל, תשיר אז עוד ויאמרו לאמור, ותהן להם מרים, ותהן להם מרים, שירו לאדוני כי גאו גאו רעם הוים. אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועוד, אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועוד. חמוך נדר בקודש, נורת תהילות אוסף אליה. לה 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 לה
for me, the, the I, I compose melody first for the most part. I write, I write melody, and and so I I looked at this the text, and I wasn't I was looking for um, words that had music in them, in the rhythm and cadence, and you'd think that the song would, but it's actually um, not so easy to <coughs> compose to. There's it doesn't rhyme well. Uh, it's uneven, and so the song wasn't my first choice, and I went and looked other places, and those also weren't quite right. Um, I've been working with a 16th century poet, Najara, um, who was very prolific, and I went and looked at his poems on the sea, and those didn't work either, and so I came back to the text because I, I thought it would be most fitting for the occasion, but uh, it may not be what I'll stick that melody to when I continue working with it. And I wrote that, uh, I meant to say, this the past two weeks. It was still coming out, it was still being tinkered with. I wrote something new last night that I played you a little piece of. Like, it, it's very much in process, and and um, and there's some difficult moves in there that, that'll be further under my fingers uh, in another month. Uh, the, the thing I was thinking about also is that shot that I'm devoted to the sounds of the letters, and I, w I don't like putting le words on melodies that don't fit right. So it ultra shot it felt like. It was like I'm so devoted to the sounds of the words that I don't want to set them in a way that's going to disturb them. Those are some of the thoughts that come to mind. But don't take, my, my initial response is don't take this melody away from this, these words because the, the uh, dun 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 I was on, I was riding those waves. It felt like the waves. Dun, 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 dun. It doesn't have to be the direct, the direct ex experience, what's underneath it. Anyway, what do you got to say? Thank you for your beautiful s uh, song and, and, and singing. I have a question. Could you talk a little bit more about how you were um, taken with or appreciated the reggae singers way of singing about slavery and how could that maybe help us as congregants, as rabbis and cantors, maybe get more people to fill the pews or fill the, the floor on Tish above and other occasions maybe? Uh, the, the lesson for me, the takeaway was that there doesn't need to be a box around, this is, here's the experience of song, you know, that as a composer I don't have to, if it's a sad song or a sad occasion, I don't necessarily need a sad melody. That was the where Midrash adds, a and I think a pshat, again, that the quote that was from the rabbis, that the, the, the Midrash doesn't upend the pshat context. It's only going to add to the feeling of it. So in any given you know, situation, a song, event, or a thing, we shouldn't limit ourselves to the context that we assume is there's like we're everyone you're operating with a box at all times. So ask yourself, where's your box? And if your box is small, make it bigger. You know that, and, and no one's gonna get up. Uh, some people are gonna get upset by the box <laughs> being bigger, but <coughs> my methodology is to district. It's like you gotta explode the box. More people will be excited by it than, and, and don't care about the people who are. It's, it's helpful. We need to go that direction. But you write this, when you say you write it, are you really writing, or is it in, are you improvising, are you um, kind of creating it by playing by ear, I guess is the word, by the feel of this music rather than reading music? I'm kind of teasing things out. One of the tricky parts is to get it to fit into um, bars or phrases, it's like I'll hear the, the, the hint of a phrase and then I'll have to draw out the rest of it. But I'm s I don't see it as it is on the page, but I see the space it needs to fit in and I see where I want to go with it. Now that second part, which is the really hip part, <laughs> came almost in a flash. The first part was longer, it was drawn out, and I didn't think I was going to that part because it's a departure from the original tune. It's, it's strong, it's dark. I didn't think I was going there. It came in a flash and I knew, okay, here's the melt. Like some of them come really fast and you get almost the whole thing and there's very little 
for me to do, and others I work out more. One thing we don't usually talk about that much is the war song aspect of Shirat Hayam, and you mentioned looking at some um, Arabic poetry, and they also had that element of uh, rejoicing at victory, and I uh, wonder if you were thinking about that when you wrote it, and we don't know, it's, it's kind of embarrassing a little bit. <laughs> the war, the war, you know, we kicked God, our God kicked your God's ass. <laughs> Uh, the thing that I did notice in the piece, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't bothered by it. Uh, I set that Ananaish Milchama to there were like kind of two melodies in the A section, and to me the, in like I'm looking at what's the music that may have this been sung to. Like there may have been music, in the song. And so there were two different phrases, and usually where Adonai is mentioned to me felt more chant-like, and it was I wasn't going to use that part of the music. I was just going to leave it on the ooh. Dun, 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 dun. That was just kind of the groove. And then I was like, oh, this will sit nice on it. This Adonai Shmilchama. And felt kind of drum-like and, and strong. Um, but what I wanted to say about kind of context and, and, and composing is that I was looking at the song and I was looking at the melody, but there's also all of the midrash that I know that I'm you know trying not to pay attention to. And there's also the my life as it's happening, and there's all the Arabic music that I'm studying. So for me to, you know, create a piece that is, you know, direct to context, to this context is almost impossible. Um, th the other piece I found very interesting was that we get, for, for the narrative of the people going through the sea, we get a song. We don't get a narrative. So the song itself is already midrash on whatever happened. So that's a weird thing, you know, that we're, we're getting a sense for what happened as the people went through via song, which is never what actually happened. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.